Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, about 9.43 p.m. here. California time, November 27th, 2024 is the date. 2.5 earthquake here on the globe. Looks like uh, they're one pointer in California as well. 2.5 down in the South America area along the Prucheli Trench. Notice uh, some adjustment going on out here on the globe. A little bit up north and a little bit down south here. The plate boundary that leaves California right there in between the two zones. Somewhat ramping up out here. Across the area of the Blanco Fracture Zone. 4.6 earlier this afternoon. Early evening, I should say. 2.8 and a more recent 3.5. So we got some adjustment going on here across the eastern area here of the Pacific Plate. And of course, that includes California, a portion of California out here where the uh, uh, majority of the coast sits. Uh, so kind of watching that activity stir up out here in the last few hours. I uh, want to check the trimmer map here tonight and see what we have across the Cascadia zero epicenters here across Cascadia for now uh, just, just a little interesting activity out here on the Blanco fracture zone of course a lot of times we'll see strain build up here across Cascadia following this type of event uh, but now we have no tremor and if we look back here in the last seven days we've had a, a pretty decent amount of earthquake activity in a linear fashion here at the end of the Blanco fracture zone down here so of course these ridges here across the Gorda Ridge is due to the uh, separation here of the seafloor. Blanco fracture zone, more or less like a strike slip zone here along this plate boundary. Uh, but nonetheless, that should continue to amplify the pressure out there across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. No earthquake activity, but we could see things ramping up here uh, in the days ahead. Uh, Northern California, minimal earthquake activity from this morning. Clear Lake volcanic field, very typical up there on the hydrothermal plants. Uh, across the area of Mammoth Mountain, of course, this area had a decent uh, earthquake swarm here last night and this morning. Nothing new to report here, at least according to the USGS map, uh, but we are going to uh, double check that on the seismograph stations here around Mammoth Mountain, which currently sits at a green level for that volcano. Go ahead and zoom in here. That earthquake activity earlier this morning was uh, very close here to the Mammoth Mountain region. Potentially, though, this could just be strain related in terms of stress out here. I'll show you why in just a minute. Uh, seismograph station. We'll key this one up. There's all the activity from late last night, as you can see throughout the day today. Uh, fairly quiet. This earthquake here, about 4:30 or so, is in Nevada. Uh, that's going to be this quake out here outside of Tonopah three-pointer that showed up on the seismograph station out there but if you notice you know along with the west coast offshore and down south here Mammoth Mountain inland here in the Nevada Basin area all seen elevated seismic activity so I think what's going on here across Mammoth Lakes there Mammoth Mountain is stress related in terms of just general plate stress fault system I don't believe it's associated with volcanic activity. I was looking out here on the um, couple of the charts on uh, in terms of the GPS displacement there across the Mammoth Mountain area, and then not a whole lot of uh, uptick going on. There's very minimal uh, deflation here in the last few months, it looks like, but nothing that would tell me that this area is on the uptick in terms of inflation. So I think it's just strain out here. Uh, again, Nevada lighting up out here in the last hour, two-pointer, a couple other earthquakes scattered out and about uh, for extreme Southern California down here. Uh, nothing lighting up too much here, although around the Puente Hills Thrust Fault, got a couple more earthquakes here this afternoon. This is the area that had a uh, four-pointer a couple months back here. Kind of made some national news here with that blind thrust fault that sits underneath Los Angeles. Of course, this area, the fault system itself can produce a 7.5 earthquake. And that goes directly underneath Los Angeles downtown area and towards the uh, uh, Beverly Hills area. It's a blind thrust fault. And, you know, of course, a major city sits on top of that. A 7.5 directly underneath Los Angeles would do more damage there locally compared to an 8.1 along the San Andreas Fault due to proximity, right? And, of course, those thrust faults out there can uh, make it feel a lot stronger at the surface level. So there's a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up on it today. 
uh, with some ones. So that's just another sign here of overall strain pattern across the West Coast. Uh, for the San Jacinto Fault Zone, typical movement there. There's really nothing of abnormal activity. Nothing across the Salton Sea for now. Of course, in the last couple days, though, we've had a number of swarms there off the plate boundary uh, or very close here to the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And that's uh, a little concerning because we haven't seen a lot of earthquake activity here, specifically on this section um, all year. I, I didn't go back years past, but... Uh, you know, there really hasn't been anything stirring up out here in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, so a couple different separate swarms, some movement directly on the San Andreas Fault up here as well, near Desert Hot Springs. Again, an overall seismic elevated pattern out here across the West Coast. Some around the creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault as well. It's going to be this uh, creeping zone, a couple smaller earthquakes. And, of course, uh, the Parkfield segment here of the San Andreas Fault, uh, which sits uh, a little bit further down south here. I think it's overdue for a six-pointer. I think average intervals here um, run about every 20 to 22 years. And our last one was back in 2004, if I remember right. So that puts us at 20 years now since a six-pointer. And there's average intervals there, 20 to 22 years, almost on a repeat uh, magnitude level there so that's obviously coming up as well soon uh, so we'll keep an eye on things out here it looks like there's a little bit further activity down south here into the Baja California area as well a uh, four-pointer uh, USGS not showing this earthquake here looks like it may be offshore here possibly um, right there about about the offshore Baja California area so that would just tell me there that there, you know it verifies that there's definitely some movement going on out here uh, across the eastern area of the Pacific Plate. We'll definitely watch that and uh, see how things play out here overnight. You know, it, I always uh, like to look at numbers here, and it seems like a lot of large earthquakes in the past historically have happened on dates that, uh, you know, are memorable for us humans, such as Thanksgiving, uh, Easter, you know, Easter earthquake. Um, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, you know, it, it's, I always think the likelihood of seeing a large event out here across the world or in California in general is going to happen on a major holiday. We'll see what happens here, but you know, you go back historically, well, I have to do that in another video, take a look at historical earthquake activity and see the dates that are associated with quite a few of these uh, major events happen on holidays or uh, a number of sequences like 1111 or you know 0606 2006 you know it's just we'll cover that uh, uh definitely another time here so there's the activity offshore um through the idaho area yellowstone not a whole lot going on there but that, let me run over and double check this real quick some wind looks like wind out here stirring up in the last few hours I'm really not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity right now. Earlier today, yes, we had a number of earthquakes there. Very small in magnitudes, but it looks like some wind is stirring up out there across Yellowstone uh, National Park. I meant to click on the windy map. I just want to verify this and see. Check out the wind gust around the area. It does look somewhat amplified out here in certain areas. So, and some of these may be higher than um, what's being shown here on the map. So... Definitely got some wind stirring up out here, mainly uh, yeah, kind of in that same horseshoe type shape that was shown up there on the map. All right, rest of the country out here, moving out in Texas, out in the oil field still. Uh, one earthquake out in Virginia, 1.6. That earthquake coming in here just a couple hours ago. Virginia sits in a uh, zone that can see some earthquake activity, specifically just outside of Richmond here to the west. This area um, had a 5.7 back in, uh, was it a 5.7? I believe it was 5.7 uh, quite a few years back. I'm wanting to think it was 2011, somewhere around there. All right, across the globe here, New Zealand shaking a little bit. Just on the, I'll take your pick here. It's going to be the northern end of the Hikurangi subduction zone here which ends roughly about here, it looks like, or the southern end of the Kermadec Trench, 
or maybe just in between a zone that uh, is not a subduction zone. Uh, 5.8 earthquake there, shaking things up across the North Island region. Let's go check out the GeoNet servers and uh, see what we have here for earthquake activity. So these guys are reporting that as a 5.7 earthquake. It struck uh, about seven hours or so ago. It was felt broadly across the North Island area. Mainly uh, just some light to weak shaking, but uh, 500 and or excuse me, 477 reports there of that felt earthquake. A couple other smaller quakes out there since then, mainly underneath North Island. Quick glance here at the earthquake drums. Well, there's that five-pointer going to show up quite nicely, actually. Upper five-pointer, 5.8, 5.7, take your pick. Uh, aside from that, you know, there's a couple of those smaller earthquakes there underneath North Island, but, uh, you know, just be on guard out there. It's another major subduction zone that's uh, uh, somewhat overdue in terms of a larger mega quake potential, that major subduction zone there. You can see it quite nicely. The ridges here off the North Island coast. All right, uh, across this area of the globe, a whole bunch of activity earlier up there through China and Mongolia, a lot of inland activity. Um, and it all it seems like it all popped off there roughly this afternoon time period. Had uh, China moving, Mongolia there, it looks like um, a few minutes later, about an hour later, 5.7 in the Philippines, and then a few minutes later, 5.8 in New Zealand. So. When you mess around with one area of the puzzle, so to speak, because technically that's all this is. It's just a bunch of flates, flates, <laughs> bunch of plates here floating around. That was that was an odd word there. That's kind of a new one. A uh, bunch of plates here floating around on some uh, liquid, so to speak, underneath. And, um, you know, the convection underneath there down below into the mantle area and deeper areas below uh, move these uh, the plates around and when you think about it when you move one area of the plate around accordingly it can adjust and have a you know adverse effect thousands of miles away it's been proven out here we see it a lot and uh, today was kind of a big one out here across the area a lot of inland strain reaching here and across the China area that tells me right there that this area is quite primed here for some big time activity. Taiwan northward. Uh, Curl Camp Chatka Trench definitely won the Kumano Ridge. And of course, uh, there's a little area here across the uh, Taiwan area that's got a little subduction zone that can see some big activity as well. So, um, you know, a lot going on right now. And uh, anything, anything can happen at any given time out there. Just good to be prepared. Hawaii, uh, mostly deeper activity out there. Really nothing changing here since this morning's update. Let's take a look here at the globe, see what we got going on. Definitely noticeable here across the eastern area of the Pacific Plate. South America, quite a few twos and threes, but really nothing major. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Mediterranean regions out here. Typical fashion, typical small earthquake activity out here. Twos and threes, nothing major going on. There's the activity from earlier this afternoon. Things were really ramping up out here. Looks like we've come to a halt in terms of newer activity out here you know, with a lot of newer movement here across the eastern area of the Pacific Plate. Although one deep earthquake here looks like um, into the northern edge here of the Japan Trench. That's going to be the 3.8 here. Pretty deep quake, but uh, we'll kind of watch things, see how they play out tonight and tomorrow. I can say Thanksgiving. You know, it's earthquakes happen in relation to numbers and events out there. You know, holidays are a big one, so let's hope it doesn't happen. But you just never know. I, I think the percentages go up here, and there's there's really no science behind it. I don't think, but it does seem weird that uh, large events, earthquakes, volcanoes take place on and revolve around certain number sequences and holidays. Just kind of a weird theory. 
All right, uh, space weather activity out here. Um, supposedly, we're going to see a G2 class storm here um, for tomorrow night. This is right now, not a whole lot going on here for tonight. This is for tomorrow. Supposedly, there's going to be uh, you know some storminess going on that will spark up the auroras. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I showed you guys in the update this morning. It's just going to be a uh, barely, barely a glancing blow from a uh, filament eruption here a couple days ago. Looks like uh, some of the the models here offline. Black and white image here. Is this image recent? It is not. Yeah, that's see, that's uh, older. I thought it looked, I thought it looked the same this morning as it did last night, but I thought my eyes was playing, my eyes were playing tricks on me. But this is a still an older image here, eleven twenty six, and that's probably going to be UTC time, so it may be coming up on two days old. Uh, this one looks newer, but I'm not for sure what's going on here with this. It looks like maybe they had to use a different. Uh, uh, space agency informational site here really hard to tell complexity wise here on what's going on um, oh there's a little outage it looks like the uh, solar dynamics observatory is currently unavailable due to an outage caused by flooding uh, in the room there at Stanford University uh, no Time frame on when this will be uh, updated. It looks like there was a little blog put out here by the uh, by the folks as well. So we'll just have to wait and see if uh, it comes back online by tomorrow morning. Uh, as far as flaring goes, not a whole lot happening right now. Looks like maybe a little sea flare activity sparking up here. Hard to tell though exactly where that's at, considering that's an old image. So we just don't know. All right, uh, but overall flare threat, 20% chance for an X flare. M flare at 65, C flare around 99% chance or so. Um, and again, we'll watch for the auroras tomorrow. We'll cover that a little bit more tomorrow. Uh, let's see here if we got anything major going on and the weather pattern changes out here. We'll put this into motion here and look at this massive low pressure across Canada, spilling in a lot of colder air here across a good portion of the country. We're talking about some uh, well below average temperatures. A little bit of snowfall associated with that as well across the Great Lakes region and into the northeast as we head towards uh, the middle of uh, next week, it looks like. And uh, California, Southern California, looks like they may get some rain as well towards the middle of December. Or so we'll watch that. Things can obviously change. There is a collision of cold air and warmer air down here. Roughly... Uh, Next weekend, not this coming weekend, but next weekend, looks like there may be some uh, severe weather potential, some ice and snow back behind that low pressure, uh, that frontal boundary. So we'll cover that a little bit more as we get uh, closer to that time period. It's a ways out there. Uh, anyway, folks, um, we're out of here. Thanksgiving Day tomorrow. Uh, I'm just going to be hanging out at home, having a little uh, get together here with Missy Mimi's, and that's about it. I'm just going to keep it pretty simple this year. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening on the live seismograph stations here, but uh, we'll just kind of watch it and see what takes place. California lighting up out here. A lot of inland activity as well. You know, it's uh, could be prime time out here pretty soon. We'll catch you guys out here tomorrow morning, of course, for the uh, Thanksgiving morning update. Have a good night, folks, and stay safe out there. Be, be on guard.